New McLaurin series. What is it? Well, it's just a form of the Taylor series. And what is the Taylor series? Well, the Taylor series is just a way of representing a function as an infinite polynomial. And what does that mean? That just means that f of x is equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x plus f double prime of a times x minus a squared <coughs> plus triple prime of a oh, over over 2 factorial plus f minus a cubed over 3 factorial on and on and on to infinity where our general term is the nth derivative of n times a or of a nth derivative of a of okay yeah of f of a times x minus a to the nth power divided by n factorial <laughs> but this is the McLaurin series when um not x, but when a equals zero. That just means when this we're centering this at a, and a is zero. Well, of course we're centering at a. This means we're centering at whatever a is, and we're centering it at zero. So what does this mean? Well, this means this. <coughs> we have a function right here, and we want to approximate it. Okay, we'll say this is our function. We want to approximate it at zero. Okay, and we're going to say our approximation is p of x. And we're going to say that p of x is equal to f of x when x equals zero. Okay, so we're saying p of 0 equals f of 0. Now that approximation is just going to look like a horizontal line. Um, that should be moved up. But imagine this and this are at the same point. And all that's saying is our approximation is equal to our function at 0. Okay, that's an okay approximation. Okay, over here, over here, it's going to be close, but it's not that great. How can we improve upon this? Well, we're going to add something to our approximation. We're going to say p prime of 0 equals f prime of 0. Okay? Now, what's the significance of doing this? Well, um, this is just an addition to our approximation up here. So, if we were to take the antiderivative of both sides, we would get the integral of p prime of 0 dx, where this is a constant, we can pull this out. So we have p prime of 0 times x plus c. But our c is just going to be p of 0, all right? So now we have a new approximation. And our new approximation is saying, that p of 0 plus p prime of 0 times x is roughly equal to f of x, all right? And this is the same thing this one's saying. It's that's about f of x, OK? And what this new approximation is going to look like graphically is this. It's going to be a tangent line right there. Right here. It's going to be a tangent line. Okay? And you can see that's a much better approximation than our horizontal line. Okay? It's going to be closer values at more values. But it's still not good enough because it's still going to be widely different at another at uh, points that are farther away. So how do we improve on this right here? 
Well, we're going to say that P triple prime, or no, we're not there yet. I'm getting ahead of myself. P double prime of 0 is equal to F double prime of 0. Okay? Now, what happens if we take the antiderivative of this? We're going to have P double prime of 0 times X plus C equals f. Uh, okay, if we take the antiderivative that was going to be that. So, this is actually unneeded. But we're going to have this, okay? Where our, and then remember, this is just a further addition to this, okay? Just like this was a further addition to this. So, we know our constant is going to be p prime of 0. So, p double prime of 0 times x plus p prime of 0 is about equal to f prime of x, I should say. f prime of x. Okay. Because, it, it, I mean, it is equal to f, pr f prime of 0. That's why I changed that. But if we take the antiderivative of this again, what are we going to have? We're going to have p double prime of 0 times x squared over 2 plus p prime 0 times x plus p of 0 is about equal to f of x, right? And this is our new approximation. We can take it a step further, OK? How do we take a step further? Just introduce a new derivative. P quadruple prime. Or even at, oh, no. Got my head of myself again. Probably won't even go that high. Let's say P triple prime of 0 equals F triple prime of 0. So um, P triple prime zero times x plus p double prime of zero equals f double prime of zero, right? Which is roughly equal to f double prime of x. Okay, and we just keep doing this over and over and over. In fact, we get to f of x right here. So we're going to have p triple prime of zero times x cubed over 3 factorial, right? Because right here, if we take the antiderivative, it's going to be over 2. But then if we take the antiderivative of that, it's going to be x squared over 2, right? If we take the antiderivative of that, it's going to be x cubed over 6, right? And 6 equals 3 factorial. I mean, as you can tell, you can probably tell, whenever we add a number to this, we're going to multiply that. that uh, whatever our new number is up here, we're going to multiply it by the bottom. And that's why we have the factorial on the bottom in the Taylor series. Okay, but we'll finish writing this. Double prime of 0 is x squared over 2 plus p prime of 0 times x plus p of 0 is around equal to f of x. And I'm sure you can understand where this is going. This is eventually going to end up as the Maclaurin series, right? Where we have f, the nth derivative of 0, multiplied by x to the nth power, all over n factorial, and that's the infinite sum, from n equals 0 to infinity, equals f of x. All right, this is the Maclaurin series. Um, so that's how it's derived. Well, here's some examples. Okay, and this works, this can really work with almost any function, but it's really coolest with functions that are infinitely differentiable. And all that means is that there's always going to be a number here, always, at 0. Um, like e to the x, sine of x, cosine of x, things like this. Um, and 
So uh, here's an example for e v x, right? E v x. We're going to say that's equal to the infinite sum from n equals zero to infinity. Or zero, yeah, zero. From n equals zero to infinity of the nth derivative of zero times x to the nth power all over n factorial. And say, uh, say we want to find e, or, or e the first, or just e. That's going to equal to, right, uh, e to the first plus e to the first times 1, right, times 1 plus e to the first, because e to the first is always going to be the derivative at e, um, of, of e to the x at 1 times x squared all over 2 plus e to the first times x cubed, uh, where, where x equals 1. So they, this just replace that with So we come up that e equals one plus one plus one half plus one sixth plus one twenty fourth plus one twentieth one one twentieth da 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 you know uh you just keep going keep going keep going um, one over n factorial and that is one way of driving the value for e. Um, and you can really do this with lots of functions, but this is where it's coolest. Uh, this is probably, or I guess the most use, at least from what we've seen. Um, but that's simply why the McLaurin series is the way it is, how we got to it, and why it's important. So, cool stuff. I certainly think so. I uh, hope you do too. Um, that's all.